just arrived over here in Australia last week and uh, I've cleaned up Atlantic Wall and now have this on the table. Um, disclaimer, haven't played it yet, nor have I played uh, the sort of predecessors in this series, the Dark Valley, nor I think it's the Dark Sands in North Africa. So this is my first playthrough of both this title and uh, any of the three in the series. Um, there's, I guess, a lot I could say about this game. The rules are not overly complex, but there are many, many exceptions. Hey, private public. Um, I'm going to mute my notifications so it doesn't stop. There we go. Um, yeah, only 24 pages of rules, but there are, fortunately, these general rules reminders and these D-Day reminders, there are sort of a few exceptions to keep in mind that, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to be very conscious of. Um, this first glance seems like a remarkable system. It runs all the way through, and this title runs all the way through to um, well, late August. Um, and let me show you the turn track. Now let me know if the angle isn't good either. I can rotate this around, but I want to show you the turn track to start off with. Because um, this is, uh, yeah, it kind of reveals what type of system this is. You notice there's a June 2, June 3, and June 4. Then we head into July 1, July 2, and July 4. So these are basically sort of the weeks. The months have been abstracted into roughly weekly periods. And within each, there are only 10 turns in the game, one for roughly each of these weeks. And within each turn, there are various activation chips. They are driven by the weather. So depending on what the weather conditions are, um, that'll tell you sort of what chips to put in the cup and thus what can happen over the course of the turn. On the first turn, we have this special opening sequence of play where we have the first wave of Allied units, then a German reaction, second wave of Allied units with naval support, another German reaction, and then we start diving into the cup. Now I will show you what is in the cup. This is always the same for the opening turn. Uh, we have, so these are the activation counters basically. You draw these out and resolve what's on them. Now German and US units have combat or move. You decide what you want to do and you put it face up like that on the uh, action round track. The British, however, are split into dedicated combat and move. So the British, sorry, I should say Commonwealth, if the Commonwealth forces draw a move marker, it has to be a move marker and they have to place it there. I'll cover the details of this later on, but um, it's either combat or move on these counters and they go into the cup and they'll be drawn out later. And again, the weather conditions dictate what goes into that cup each turn, basically the action chit availability for the turn. The US forces include some French forces. The Commonwealth forces include British, Canadian, uh, Polish forces, uh, I think the three, the three main forces in that Commonwealth pool. This is a victory point objective game. Uh, both sides are striving to accumulate victory points and these are some very interesting objectives to strive for. And it's worth now looking at sort of the broader map. So, um, the Allies secure victory points for capturing Cherbourg. Now Cherbourg is abstracted up in this little box at the top here. It's certainly an important allied objective because if they can't capture Cherbourg by turn seven, the Germans instantly win. So this has to be an early priority for the American forces arriving on Utah plus the airborne. Um, the sooner they capture it, the more victory points they get. But <laughs> combat in Cherbourg is abstracted. You basically send German, uh, American forces into the Sherwood box, you add up all the American forces in that box, compare with the, the German forces, and it's just the one combat role. Uh, there's a special Sherborg combat results table, as you can see on the right there, and there's a decent chance they can surrender. Uh, if you can get more than three to one odds American units in there, they will very likely surrender. Otherwise, you'll kind of get an exchange of forces. Um, yeah, very heavily abstracted. Keeping in mind the scale of this game, I just showed you the turn track, it runs through to the end of August. You're dealing with the initial landing, um, which will take about five minutes, we'll show that in a moment. 
But then you've got all the way down um, to this Coutances here, you've got St. Lowe, and this is only halfway down the map. The map runs all the way down to Avranches here, um, for those of you familiar with Operation Cobra. And then there's this Brittany box. This abstracts the movement of um, US forces into the sort of south, southwest of this region. Once they've reached the Brittany box, this is a fascinating rules idea that Ted Razor came up with. They can enter the box, you can enter as many US units as you want, and they can hang around in Brittany. This represents them thematically um, securing the port, securing the region, but then at any time the US player, excuse me while I move the map down, can re-enter those forces, excuse the glare as well, I'll try to set the camera so it doesn't get too much glare. The US player can re-enter these Brittany forces along any of these S reinforcement areas. Um, and that represents them swinging back up and potentially pocketing the German units in this area. Once they re-enter, I think the Germans can no longer use this S reinforcement, these S reinforcement hexes down south. You've got fillets down here uh, and Khan way up here. So this is certainly uh, <laughs> yeah, a big and broad um, scale of, uh, well, it runs for Oh, I guess two and a half, close to three months. Okay, so big scale, um, you've got uh, typically uh, brigade, sorry about that, just clean the camera, um, brigade or uh, regiments. There are some smaller uh, battalion level units and uh, yeah, strongholds and so forth. Um, look, I think the best way to cover much of these other elements of the gameplay, you've got an eastern map box, you've got victory points for entering there. Um, the Germans, so the Americans need to withdraw their airborne units by the end of turn five. And if they fail to do so, if they refuse to do so, if they're important to fighting, the German player will gain victory points for all those uh, airborne and uh, ranger and glider and British special service units still on the map at the end of turn five. So these units need to kind of do their job and then get out. All right, let me know, as I said, if the camera angle, if you're not liking what you're seeing, there's too much glare and I'll zoom in a bit or zoom out or, or move it around. So we start the signals of play um, normally with a turn marker advance, it's turn one. The weather phase is fixed for the first turn on showers, which again dictates what chits are in the cup, and it will also dictate certain other rules. So each allied tactical air marker may be used once per turn and naval support is available normally. This doesn't become available until the second wave. We would normally then have a replacements fave phase. I have all the replacements lined up down here in turn order. The game suggests you can stack these in the turn record track, but if I were to stack all the turn two replacements, they'd get about, I think about that high. And I'm not prepared to risk that tumbling over. So with that done, we then move to the action phase. And as I said, the first four actions are fixed. I simply pick up the first action marker. It is the first wave of Allied invasion forces. And they can pretty much start moving onto the map. This is where, I'm going to take the camera up a bit closer so you can see what's going on in detail. We'll start with Utah Beach and we'll work our way from uh, left to right. So we look at first box, first wave. These are all the German strong points and OS units. You notice they have a question mark on their strength. We don't know what they are until we begin to attack. So we flip this over and it's a one, zero. This is a nice combat to get us started. We have 12 to one odds. And if you look at the CRT, the, um, the <laughs> minimum, um, the worst case scenario for the Allies here on the 6 to 1 column is a DR asterisk that will force the defender to 
retreat. Uh, there, th these strong points can't retreat, so basically we don't have to roll for the dice for this. They're instantly destroyed. And that's one dead, and they can advance. Now, in these opening waves, the attackers can advance into the hex, and they can advance one extra space. So I'm going to move these guys for one extra into there. I could advance them out into the marshes, but uh, there'll be combat in the second round, and I really want to concentrate on attacking these German forces. As I said, this is the first time I've played this, so if you notice anything, shout out and pull it up, and I'll address it. Something to point out, during these opening waves, we are only looking at the, at the uh, naval invasion forces. The airborne don't move until the regular movement chip. They're kind of, they've landed, you'll see where they are around here, they're getting themselves organised, but they don't participate in combat during these waves. We leave these guys where they are for now. We have the rangers on Pointe de Hoc, uh, and we hope this is a low one, and it is not. Okay, <laughs> just my luck. So we've got three on three. Pointe de Hoc has a series of sort of special rules. Um, they treat exchange and BL1 results as defender eliminated during this first round only. I'm sure there were some other special rules about point to hook. Nope, that's the only one I can see on page 19. Okay, so we've got a die roll here. I need to find where on earth I put my die. Here it is. Okay, and we get a result of one. That's not gonna be good. So one to one, one is an AL1 result. The attacker loses one step. Poor ranges, they're just a one step unit. They're eliminated. We head around to the first wave here. Now this is special Omaha defenses. Um, we've got 12 attackers from the 29th division, a 12 strength of attackers versus a strong point with strength three. Oh, this is not gonna be good for Omaha. Three plus three for this special augmented Omaha defense counter. Both of the Omaha beaches have these special counters. So now we're looking at 12 on six. <sighs> we'll see how we go. It's a two to one. Two to one, four is going to give me a DR result. But strong points ignore DR results during the first and second wave. That's it. So that could have been worse, but what will happen next wave is the second wave of 29th Division troops will enter this hex and they'll attack together. Now we're on the right with the, the 1st Division. They've got a strength of the Germans, have a strength of 2, plus 3 is 5 against 16. So now at least we're looking at 3 to 1. 3 to 1, 3 gives us a DR asterisk result. Now those special markers treat DR asterisk as exchange and they're considered, considered to have two steps. So they're eliminated, but they reduce both of these first divisions. So we're going to have the 18th regiment and the 16th regiment. Both reduced, both can advance, and both can take a second hex of advance. Um, And I think I'd like to get them. Yeah, I think supporting this attack. Um, yeah, I mentioned that um, they can ignore DR results. That's only, I think, if the attacks are coming across the, the area. Something I should have been doing as well is marking these as open beaches. So Utah is open and that right hand side is open as well. If the Germans ever capture three of these open beaches and close them, they instantly win the game. So it's something the Allies have to be uh, mindful of, not to let those beaches fall into German hands. If the Allies manage to capture at Marches Le Bars on the first turn, they get a bonus victory point. It's certainly feasible. Let's see how the British can do out at Gold Beach. We have the 50th Division landing here. Actually, that's the 50th Division with a contingent from the 56th Division. A 
against a strong point of strength two. Looking at 12 to two, which is six to one in clear to white terrain is another guaranteed success. Um, beach is open and I can advance one additional hex. <sighs> um, let's make a move for Adam Archers, but also getting behind these defenders here. Actually, you know what I'll do? These are independent. I'll send a 50th that way. I'll send the independent unit this way. All right, these are nice thick GMT counters too, by the way. I don't know if it's coming across on, on camera, but it's really easy to handle these. We've got a strength here of 12 to one, guaranteed. That'll advance as well. One, two. And again, just a reminder, they can ignore enemy zones of control for this first wave only. The second wave can make a second advance, but they do not get to ignore enemy zones of control. Here we have an attack taking place in Cassel Samir. And this is a town terrain. This is the uh, Canadians. We've got the third Canadian Infantry Division. And the strong point has a strength of two. So we have to roll here. We've got six to one. The town gives us a one column shift to the left. Yep. Um, and we roll the die. So five to one, four. Is a defender eliminated? Nice. Enable advance and okay, so we're here. Um, press inland or get into these strong points. I think we want to get into these strong points here. Start clearing these out as soon as possible. We'll have a second wave coming up. Now we've got the more third Canadians. Is there supply in this game? I'm just chip. There is supply. Uh, the Germans need to check supply uh, every turn. Sorry. Supply is checked at all times. So before you engage in combat, you check supply. Um, before you move, you check supply. You draw supply basically to a supply source, which is, for the start of the game at least, the edge of the map for the Germans, or an open beach for all the Allied forces. There is also attrition, and Germans suffer attrition at the end of every turn. The Commonwealth, the, sorry, the Allied forces only suffer attrition on, what is it, rainy and stormy turns. Now, um, let me get through this and I'll talk about the weather just a little bit more, but yeah, there's always supply, attrition varies. We've got here um, 11 to two, which is five to one in the clear. Five to one, six is going to result in a defender eliminated. And these guys can advance and they can advance one more hex and they will. Stacking is four units per hex, provided they are from the, there are no, sorry, let me, provided there are, there's not two different divisions stacking together. You can have independent units like those guys on top, the special service units on top, but you couldn't, for example, stack 50 div with the third Canadian under here. So what I have here is third Canadian, third Canadian, third Canadian. They can all stack together with the independent special service uh, commandos. Yep, that's all good. Um, okay, last one out here on Sword Beach. Got third Infantry Division against the one. This is again guaranteed, we've got 11 to one. They're all killed off. They can advance and then advance again down there. Sixth Airborne Division has landed, secured Pegasus and Horsa across the far side of the Orne River, but again, they don't get to move just yet. That is then the end of the first action round. That's pretty much uh, all the allies do as part of this first wave. That's the opening move. This will be fixed, as I said, for the first four turns of every game. There's only one scenario in this game. It's a full campaign. The Germans now get a fixed reaction. They have to do this, basically. Normally, they will get anything from one to four reaction chits, and they can play these at their option after an allied turn. So if the allies draw, for example, a combat, they do their combat, then the Germans have one of these reaction chits available, 
and incidentally they do have these two plus a bonus two for the rest of this first turn. They can play that reaction to, in effect, react with typically one of their formations. For this first turn, as I said, it's fixed, so they they have to play a reaction, and indeed they want to anyway. And I think they want to activate either the 716th, you can see these guys here, spread out, or the 352nd. And uh, I think I like the idea, I mean I could, there's a lot of options here, um, but I'm trying to take the sort of the broad, big picture approach here. I could jump into Adam Archers and try and stop it for one, save one victory point. Um, or I could try to form more of a decent defensive line. So what I'm going to do basically, the German reaction is to activate the formation, which is the 352nd division. They get to move all units of the 352nd and they get to engage in one combat with either a Kampf group or something else. Uh, Tiger Battalion, neither of which are part of the 352nd as far as I'm aware. So what am I gonna do here? Okay, I'm worried about Omaha breaking open, so I could move this reduced brigade or regiment 914th into Trevier to maybe defend the town there. Um, there are special bocage rules as well. Bocage is really good for defending in. Um, cities, I think they're called, or city hexes are very good for defending in as well. So I could pull back to Bayou. Um, a lot of clear terrain here. I think I'll just pull back. Oh, the other thing is, I believe there's reduced German movement during this um, initial reaction. Yeah, the first German reaction. All normal reaction rules, movement allowance is halved and units may not use the road movement rate. So these guys have a movement of just three. Clear terrain only costs one to move through though. So they could go one, two, three. I don't want to be too close. There's been this flood of 50 division troops coming on um, and they kind of want to pull back to better defensive terrain. Whilst also, there are sticky zones of control. So whenever an enemy unit moves into their zones of control, they have to stop moving. So by just pulling back, I can even just go there. But then that's, yeah, we'll do that. Um, what else do we have at the 352nd? We've got these guys down here on the beach. They'll pull back. Um, mm. Minor River is plus two, so it costs them plus two to get across there. So one, two, three to get across that Minor River. Yeah. Um, where else? Okay, this is unit down in St. Lo. They can't use the road costs. They have to move through Bocage. It is um, plus three. It is three movement points to move in there, so they've just got to basically go there and stop. And that looks to be it for the 352nd. Uh, these guys here will move up to the bridge. Okay, so that's the initial German reaction. Now we have the second wave and we have two naval support markers. We basically put this in your little pocket or operational area and you can use this for one combat per action round in clear or town terrain. Uh, I'll double check that, make sure I've got it right. Naval support. There's one US, one British. They can be used on sun, cloud, shower turns starting with this wave they can only support their respective forces. Um, yep. 
they can also be used on the defense as well, which could be very valuable because they're quite strong. I mean, these counters add plus six to combat. If you're using that sort of in a defensive capacity, it adds a lot to your defense. Um, so the first thing we have to do is bring on our second wave of reinforcements. These units are placed on their assigned beach. So Utah only has elements of the 4th Division, 22nd Regiment. Uh, the reinforcements of the 29th move up along with these engineers and reinforcements from the 1st Division move up. And these are third wave reinforcements, so they don't move yet. We also have, these are third wave, second wave. They move into that beach. They're pretty happy there. This is third wave. And we have second wave from here. And this is um, 27th armored, third infantry, third infantry. Moving into the Soul Beach area. Okay, with those forces landed, we can now begin our attacks. And again, we are attacking with those forces just landed and the first wave forces, <coughs> not yet the airborne. They are still getting organized. Uh, yeah, not ready to attack. But we have some decent forces here. We have, we can throw, ooh, okay. So this is gonna be a bit of a gamble. Because I don't, I didn't look at the back of the Ost troops. I don't know how strong they are. Um, I'm going to throw, I've got basically 18, 18, uh, 23 combat strength. I'm going to throw 11 here and the other 12. Yep. Oh no, that's 101st. That's not even. Um, so what's more important? Do I take a gamble on a strong point? Try and clear it out and throw 12 at the Ost. I think I will. So these guys, this is the uh, 8th Regiment and 10th, sorry, 12th Regiment of the 4th Division. Strength of 12 attacking these guys in the clear. Well, that's a marshy terrain as well. So that's going to send me one to the left. Hmm. I think marsh is one to the left. Marsh is one to the left. So maybe, maybe I send just, I've got 18. Okay, so in that case, I'm gonna send six out here and 12 against the strong point. Okay, so six out here, two, okay. So I've got um, three to one in the clear, three to one, three, three to one, Three is going to give me DR asterisk, and they are going to retreat one, two towards the nearest supply point, which is down south. These guys can advance, and they can advance a second hex if, uh, uh, what is it? Um, provided they don't enter an enemy zone of control. So they can capture the Samara Glees uh, safely, because it's not in an enemy zone of control. Incidentally, retreats, you may notice I retreated to two hexes. Retreats are two hexes long. Um, yeah, it's always fixed. Then we've got 12 on two, which is six to one in the marsh. Brings it down to five to one. Five to one, six is going to eliminate that defender. And we can advance in to there could advance a second hex, but there's nothing much I could do. Um, I wonder if I even want to do that. Because mm. there's some very strong defenses, def uh, German defenses out here. Um, maybe I'll just advance with one and leave the other one to go there. Sorry, just to get it historically correct. 
they came from the beach, so the beach guys will move in and they will hold their ground here and start driving west to cut the Catentin Peninsula. They haven't got far to go. Talking about this, um, it'll come up later, but I mentioned earlier Sherborg is abstracted. Once the Allies cut the peninsula, any German forces sort of north of that point that are then out of supply immediately withdraw to Sherborg. And this is dangerous because <laughs> it puts them all in together as one large force that a combined Allied force has to deal with. So the Allies basically, I think the message here is they want to try to eliminate and reduce as many of the Germans whilst around Valence and Montebourg as they can. Try to reduce all these guys almost before they cut the peninsula. They don't want to, or maybe they do, maybe the sooner they cut the peninsula, the easier it becomes. But um, yeah, I'm mindful that as soon as this is cut, all these forces jump into this box and be, just get added together. All right, shifting around to Omaha Beach. And I completely forget about movement. Um, so I did all that combat out at Utah, but I didn't move any of these forces. And I don't think I checked that. Um, No, no movement is allowed in this round. So there's no movement during these opening waves. Second wave. I think I'm just gonna double check that. So allied second wave, I placed my second chit. Um, they're placed in their bait beaches. Yeah, so basically they're, they're placed and units that have landed may attack adjacent units. So they don't get to move yet. Correct me if I've got that wrong, but they can attack. And there's one strong point here in range. Um, yeah, geez, it's gonna be wiped out. 18, 19, 20, 21, 21, 29, plus eight is 37 on six, which is six to one. Uh, I did a roll, so I don't know if it's guaranteed six to one. Six to one, three is defender eliminated. Yep. So we have opened. We have opened Omaha Beach. Yep. And again, we can advance two hexes. So these guys can go one, two, um, yeah, that's about it. I could advance those engineers into there. Okay. Shifting around to the Commonwealth beaches. And gold is clear. Juno is clear, but we've got some strong points out here. Um, Going to split into a 11 on two, which is five to one. In the clear, five to one, two, gives me a DR asterisk result. They have to retreat, they can't, they're eliminated, and I can advance, but I'm not going to. Then we have a 12 on three, which is a four to one in the clear. Four to one, four is an ex uh, exchange result. Um, defender eliminated, and I lose one step. So one step for them, and the Canadian suffer some casualties. But they can now advance and they will do into that hex. Now, 
the third division out here. He's got three strong points to contend with. Um, and I'd like to open the road, road to cards. So this is the most important one. 11 on two, five to one in the clear is one. It's a DR result. Um, I fear that there's a special rule cancelling that. The... Strong points. Yep, they ignore DR results. Ah, only if attacked from the beach approach. That's a relief. So they must satisfy that DR result. They have to retreat. They can't. They're eliminated and they can advance. They then get an extra hex to advance and they're on the outskirts of Khan. This looks scary for the Germans, but don't worry. They'll get their reaction in just a moment. And we have 21st Panzer <laughs> Division units just on the outskirts. Now we've got a choice. We've got 18 forces here. Do we split or concentrate? Um, well, Usterholm is a city, which is not going to be nice for combat. It's going to give me two column shifts to the left. So I'm going to attack here with 18, 2, 1. Wipes that out, and that should be an open beach as well. That's an open beach. And that's an open beach. And I put a British open beach where the American one should be. Um, so we've got open, open, open. Could advance and will advance with some of these forces. One, two. Um, keeping one brigade, 9th Brigade, 3rd Division on the beach, just because I don't... I mean, these guys can attack and just in case. I mean, I could draw on naval support. I just don't want to invite the Germans to attack these beaches unnecessarily. So yeah, look, let's, let's, let's play it safe. So there we go. This is the second wave now complete. Um, now, all beaches are open. And I have a spare British beach open marker. Why is that? Because that should go there. That's another beach open. All right, all beaches are open, no beaches closed. Um, but there's certainly the potential, if things go poorly, particularly on Omaha, for a beach, potentially both beaches to be closed. Um, just for context, for those who watched the Atlantic War video, that took me about a week to get through that phase. And here we are. It's a much quicker way to resolve beach landings um, with, a, I guess, a similar outcome. So we now look at the next activation chip, and again, it's this mandatory German reaction. Um, and as I said, we're going to activate the 21st Panzer Division. They have half movement. Um, cities cost one movement point for the Germans, so they can go one, two, three. Again, I activate the entire formation here. So I've got some forces down here. Um, hmm. One, two, three. Three. Uh, forest cost me two, four, five. We can occupy the woods there. We've got zone control here. Um, then we've got this mechanized unit here. They can move five. Oh no, it's full movement, of course. Full movement because there's a second German reaction. So they can use a full movement, including roads. So we could um, sorry about that. We could come out here and consider either defending here or driving down here. So let's go half a movement point, one, two, three, four, five, and that seems like a pretty decent place to defend in this area. It's a town. 
which will give the Germans a one column shift to the left. This is a unit with a different, so this unit has six attack, six defense. They have six attack, eight defense. So they'll be defending with decent combat value in that town. Uh, and no other 21st Panzer Division troops to move. So we have at least, after those first four actions, um, a decent German line, also pretty much reflecting historical German movements. Uh, I don't know about the exact um, Kump groups, A, C, and B, so, but yeah, there we go. Now, that's the fixed, I'll just rotate you around again to show you the four action rounds that are done. And these are the two, this is the Allied Pocket, I have these available. We now dive into the cup and we draw the next one. And it's going to be British Combat. Now, this is not good. I didn't, I kind of, uh, I'm one hex away from so many of these places. And this is where I'm going to introduce another special rule for you. It's the combined action rule. Once per turn, the British and once per turn, the Americans can draw on this combined action. Nope. This starts on turn two, <laughs> opening three words, starting on turn two. So I'm not going to draw on that rule. Normally, I could draw on this rule from turn two onwards to do a combined action where I can move one hex and then engage in combat. Having read that first, <laughs> those first four words, I'm not going to do this. Instead, just British forces engaging in combat kind of sucks because there's only two very limited combats I could do. I could attack con, ah, oh, this is just a waste of an activation. So it goes on the action track. <sighs> I could do an attack on Khan with naval support would give me 12, 17 on six. Two to one with two column shifts to the left would be very adverse. Same out here, it'd give me 14 on six, two to one with a column shift for the woods would make it one to one. I don't want to start wasting my forces and I've only got six to one there. Look, there's another British combat chip in the cup. Maybe, maybe the next one will be better. Kind of more fortuitous time for the British. So we're putting them on the track. Nothing's happening. No combat at all. And we draw this American combat or move. Now this is interesting. Okay, so the first time you draw the... I can choose either whether it's combat or move. I'm going to choose movement. All right. I'll put this on the action track. Because... I need to bring on my third wave. And your third wave comes on with the first movement chit for either the Americans or the, the Commonwealth forces. So this is an American chit. I bring in my American third wave. They, they are treated as sort of reinforcements. They arrive on the beach. And this is 90th, oh no, oh, so yeah, 90th division with the 101st glider. Um, I'll just check that glider whilst I land the second division in Omaha. And they can go this way and land on the western end of the beach. So looking at the waves, looking at the third wave, reinforcement. Okay, airborne. Yeah. So the 101st just lands. Yeah, and the first, all, they all land without an entry die roll. Seaborne units are placed. Um, all the pictures are open, so they're all fine. The 325th Glider Regiment of the 82nd is placed in any hex containing a unit of the 82nd Airborne. This is the unit, this unit up here. These represents airfield. Well, here it is, airfields in England. They're placed with any unit of the 82nd. And this is really going to drive my um, 
my strategy. What do I want to do here? This is sort of the scattering of relatively, relatively weak German units. Look, these two around Carantan could easily be reached by the fourth and these units. Um, we've got this Ost unit here, um, Pont Labby here. Um, a pretty vulnerable German armoured uh, battalion here. If I add five to these guys, it gives me five to one in the clear. I'm going to do that. Just gives me, relieves the pressure on the 101st. And the, just to continue reading, the uh, 6th Air Landing Brigade is placed in 4704. 4704. There. Um, historically, these were, I believe, the reinforcements that turned the 21st Panzer Division back from their drive towards the coast. Okay. Um, yeah. That's it. That's pretty much um, all that happens. I think. I'm just going to double, double check that. No, all units. Oh, sorry, they now actually move. So they're third wave reinforcements. I do have first turn reinforcements. Oh, this is big stack here of first turn. US reinforcements, but they don't land now. They'll land with any subsequent movement shit that I draw. Um, I'll run through reinforcements later on. For now though, all US units get to move. Um, and I'm going to secure Point Abbey. I'm going to get some 4th Division units to run along this road. One, two, yeah, up there. And I really want to capture Karen Tan quickly, and at very, in the very least, um, do some damage to Germans. So, ooh, what have we got here? That's not a road, so it's straight into a marsh, which is three movement points for Five. These guys will go one, two, three. And like I said, I've got the strong points on the coast here, which I can slowly clear out, but I really want to try and focus on um, reducing some of these guys. So I can go three, four, five, six, seven, up to here. Three, four, five, six, or stack them there which is about as far as they can get if I want them to participate in combat. Um, so I can't stack those guys together, that's a mistake. Three, four, five. Three, four. Bocage is five, six, seven. Mm. Put them in some there at least, just to hang about a bit. Okay, that's movement around the Utah area. Now we've got Omaha. Um, I'm not overly concerned with this strong point here on Point de Hoc. Um, I'm more concerned with Trevier down here and Bayou. Um, one, two, three, four. Five, six. I can jump in, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Using that uh, that minor road across the Drom River behind these German units, catching them off guard, 352nd, should have pulled back further. Um, 
Okay, we've got the 26th Regiment of the 1st Division marching into Bayou. Um, now, I want to really surround and eliminate these German defenders here. And what they should have done, Germans should have used their, one of their last two reactions to do something about it, but they didn't. Got to remember the Germans have that reaction opportunity. So one, two, three, four. This is a first division stack. Then we've got a second division stack here. They'll come along and help. And then 29th will head out my beach open marker with me and pick off that flak as long as there's no armoured units here yep they're going to wipe them out um say they need six to one odds against this 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 flak they have you can see parenthesized four they um have up to four strength but only when there are armoured or mechanised units uh attacking This is just infantry. They have a defense strength of one, so this will be six to one, which is the best possible odds, which frees up these guys. Um, 12. Like I could clear out this point. I just don't know what the incentive is to do so. Instead, I could try and sort of um, get across the Ur River here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and joining that attack. Why not make a really convincing attack on that 350s that isolated and already reduced? Okay, panning around. They're not going to want to attack. Attacks aren't mandatory, but there's this kind of interesting rule about um, <laughs> if you attack and the attackers have other enemy in their zone of control, they also have to attack them. Okay, so... Um, the British certainly want to capture Aramanches by the end of the first turn, so they'll do that and then move through. And I'll put a nice little control marker to show that I did that. Um, and I get a victory point. Um, so that's a first victory point, I think. Capture on turn one, yep, I've done that. One victory point. So, allies are in the lead. Well, I don't know where those guys came from. They're in 4100, which is here. They should come on the second wave. I'll move there, maybe. All right, so I can... I want to get at the Germans and hurt them before they can retreat and form a decent line. So I'm going to go one, two. This is all 50th Division on an attachment there. Two, three, it's easy to get to. I've also got some armoured unit here with choices. Um, I could start to launch some attacks along the line here. I could bring the armour around and attack. Get some nice attacks going on these two defenders. I could just ignore Khan for the time being. Yeah, let's try and wipe out. Let's try and at least do some damage. So one, two, three. And then these guys will move up to there, get some Canadians involved. And then we'll get these guys to move into here. And those guys to move into here. And these two sacks will attack here, these two here. So I'll have a six to one in the clear. And then I don't know what that'll be, but it'll be pretty strong against that town. And we will just leave Colin for the time being. We will attack Oosterham, Oosterham and the 6th Airborne will hold their ground for the time being. Oh, I've moved way too far. That's, um, okay, it's my mistake there. The British shouldn't have moved at all. The British should not have moved at all. Get back to your places, guys. because that was just an American movement marker. Um, 
got way ahead of myself. So then, this does give the Germans the opportunity to react, and they'll spend one of their reaction markers to, to activate... Um, keep in mind, this is just German American movement, not their combat. So they can activate the 352nd to pull back from Trevier. Um, it is Bocage 2, 3, 4, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Where do they want to retreat to? Um, kind of towards St. Low. So 1, 2, I'll hold the crossroads there, 3, 4. Yeah, okay. Um, these guys will try to get it out of that little pocketed area. So they'll go one, two, three, four, and I have to stop there, I guess. Um, yeah, it's a shame you can only activate sort of one formation, saving at least a reduced, yeah, a reduced brigade or regiment. Might be saving these guys by getting them out here. We'll see what happens next. Okay. And it is German movement or combat. Okay, so now I think... Now I think the Germans can... bring their reinforcement on. Now the way this works is, we make a German reinforcement die roll. Oh God, it's a one. Uh, it's not a good sign. <laughs> so we look at available, if I can pan the camera way back, um, I've placed all the first turn German reinforcements around the edge of the map. Now the die roll, th these are all the available. We can, the Germans now have a choice. They can bring on that, I think it's that die roll halved in reinforcements or the option they're going to choose they can roll the die first and then make the decision that die roll halved no sorry it's that die roll which is one or half they're available now they have seven formations available every one of these stacks is an available formation basically division 77th division three um third falschirm jaeger uh 17th ss uh third flak Panzerleer Division, Panzerleer, and then we've got two more off to the right. Um, and I can pick half the available, rounded down, I think. Uh, rolls one die, I may enter that number, or half rounded down. So I can pick three formations. Um, now I like the look of Third Volksmeerga, they have good defensive values. Panzerleer is huge, so they're, they're an absolutely essential consideration. Um, the 17th SS over here, and they're pretty weak. So I think we're going to go Panzerleer, 17th SS, and 3rd Jäger. They come in in their letter hexes. Uh, incidentally, there are three reinforcements, uh, yeah, three areas. There's west, way out way out in the west here, south, and then east, way up in the top, along this eastern map edge, basically. So it's nicely numbered, clear, and you get a bit of a choice there in where they come on. Third Fulcher Mega are going to drive straight towards St. Low. They get um, six movement points, half along the primary road. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and they can make it all the way up to there. Um, the 17th SS and the Panzerleer though should be able to get much further. Uh, they come in south and south, driving straight up towards Kong. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
they can get all the way up to there on their first move. Um, now I know I did say Penzalir, but I'm wondering if one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could get elements of the 101st SS Panzer Division into Con. Does it matter if they can't even cross the river? Um, was it more important to get Panzer on the board? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's actually swap them around. So we've got 17th SS driving through Thury Harkor towards Khan in the east side. Pendle driving kind of straight down the middle towards Tulsa Sales, Villas Bocage. Um, yeah, um, and of course it's a, it's a full German movement. So you place those reinforcements first, then you do the movement. Um, what can the Germans do? So the Americans, I know they've got two activations left. I know the, the, the Commonwealth forces have at least two activations. I kind of want to, where possible, Conserve my forces. Um, yeah. So I'm basically kind of just retreating. <laughs> they, they can retreat. They can retreat. They can go one, two, three, four. They can always move a minimum of one. Um, 352nd, we'll come back to them in a moment. Uh, these guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, into that wooded terrain. There's a bit of a gap here. Um, I could, could cover it, I'm sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not completely covering it. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Closing off that western sort of route. Um, okay, these guys along the coast. We'll get them away from the coast. One, uh, three, six pretty much. I'll get these guys to join in. Maybe in Montebourg? Do I, do I have sort of... So I'm moving things out in way up in the north here. Oh, look, to be honest, um, but I love Mark Simic. Sorry, just addressing um, JTJ's question about how this compares to normally 44. Look, I'm only a couple of activations in, but I like the feel of this better than Normandy 44. There are some kind of quirky peculiarities, um, some, yeah, all these kind of reminder rules that I have to remember. So some exceptions, but I'm liking this better than Normandy 44, which is saying a lot. Look, if you've seen my uh, Holland, uh, Normandy 44 playthrough, Ardennes 44, Holland 44, I absolutely love Mark Simonich design, but I'm liking this particular treatment of Normandy better um, for several reasons. Um, it's playing a lot quicker for a start, and I like the scope. I like how you, know, you can basically, all, all these off-map boxes, the potential for what they can do. Haven't dealt with them yet, but just what, what they offer. I love the idea that you can move into Brittany and then pop back out near Domfront down here and then drive towards you know, Filet, so pocket these gems. Just that idea, which I want to see in practice. Um, uh, it's easier than Normandy 44. And it feels easier than Normandy 44 whilst retaining, I'd argue, that look, thus far it really feels, um, yeah, like, like the first week of the invasion. Keep in mind the scale here. We're dealing with 
we're dealing with the waves of the invasion, now we're dealing with the, the days after. That's all sort of abstracted. Uh, you don't have sort of, this is not necessarily the 7th of June or the 8th of June. It's somewhere around there, sort of broadly abstracted. Um, yeah. So I've done all the moving around here. I've just sort of shifted some of the Germans to block Volant, just to block if the Americans really want to grind away at the coastal defences, they can do so. I'll let them have that. And I'll pull around to stop them capturing the city and, and moving out in this area. Um, this flak gun is going to survive and pull back to Sydney Samir. Um, these guys can continue or be reinforced. This is a question. I've got so many, I can do like every German unrestricted German movement. Um, yeah, the Germans got lucky getting their movement out early. This is what's interesting about this game. I already feel that there's huge potential for replayability. So I hope you don't mind me shuffling the camera around. I just want to kind of give you a sense of the sort of scale that we're looking at here. All these German units out in the left here, the Coutances. Is that the right hex? Yep, 2015. These guys can now come forward and reinforce, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this armoured unit. Um, Volksschirmjäger can move up to the front and pen the 29th and the 1st Division in around Omaha. Uh, one, two, three. Four, five, six. They can reach Saint Jean de J. One, two, three, four, five, six. They'll pick them up on the way. Just a small detachment. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll get these guys just to pull back. And why not form a more solid defensive line there? We'll then get the Penzalier. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. The Ballery. Eight. Um, okay, these guys can now cross over the river. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, don't want to give up too much ground, but. <laughs> so it's basically two column shifts for defending in Bocage. Um, and now these guys survive. One, two, three, four, five, six, depending on Tilly's cells. Uh, so these Panzerlier formations here. They can't stack with other divisions, keep in mind. Um, here, am I pulling back too far? Let's kind of hold the line here. Get the 17th SS. One, two, three, four. We'll move in there. We'll get their other unit to move into town. We'll get these Germans to pull back. One, two, three. Just the whole position out there. Yeah, and if I, I look, I haven't played Dark Valley nor Dark Sands, so I don't know. Um, look, it, I feel like it's got the potential to be very swingy. I think the idea is it adds a lot of tension. Um, I love chip pull mechanisms in games. It adds tension and certainly really helps with solo gameplay. You never know what's going to happen next, um, but it does have the potential to really swing results. Um, yeah, um, Wozniak Games did, have done, a, I mean, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's a very prolific designer. Woz, Wozniak, I'm probably butchering that, but one, two, three. Uh, Four, five, six. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't really have to pull back all the way to Telisa cells. I can just hold sort of there. Now this, this presents a, a combined, oh, okay. There's also this line here. Got to remember the US zone, British zone line. It runs all the way down here. I don't know if you can see that. I've kind of completely been oblivious of it. The Americans can cross it, but they can't go any further. So this is as far as this American unit can go. It's not allowed to move into this hex column. All right, I'm pretty happy with oh, so a couple of these little units out here. Oh, crikey, we've got the whole 12th SS. No, they didn't arrive, did they? Oh, they actually start on the map. <laughs> Sorry, missed those guys. Excuse my arm in the way. Got this nice big stack of SS units down here. And they can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Wow, okay. A um, couple of formations around here. I don't really know what to do with. Um, moving up into the marshes just to block things. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So yeah, just penning, penning the Allies in. And that is the end of German movement. A pretty successful movement. And then we have British combat. Still, still frustrating. Um, yeah, that's, uh, British haven't had a movement yet. And they still can't do anything. Uh, okay, they... No. Oh, yeah, what the heck. They'll attack... Ah, oh, it's a city. No, still nothing doing. So we'll just go straight to the next. And now this is interesting. I could play my second. Here's what's in the cup. Okay, so there's two German combats, two American and one British. I could play my last reaction to advance and really, really pen the Americans in. Or I could play. Um, keep in mind there. Oh yeah, there's two German. I could get a German movement. If there's a German movement, I think they'd be looking pretty, pretty good. It's a German movement. <laughs> right. Let's play that and let's move right up into the blockage. One, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two. We'll advance into the wooded terrain. Things are looking good along here. These guys are a bit vulnerable. Um, 7 16th Division. They kind of. They don't have. They're going to pull back one, two, three, four, five. Um, and now. Now, now, now. 12th SS. <laughs> Do I strike at 6 airborne? 20, 30, 30 against 8 plus the 6. I think I do. I think I move and try and destroy their foothold over the Orne River. Which means that now 711 can move up. I'll take their place. And that's, uh, yeah, that's looking good. If the Germans can now get a combat. Okay, that's the end of German movement. Look, things around Utah, around this area, are looking pretty stable, so I don't feel the need to do anything. Um, yeah, what more can I do around here? I guess I could reinforce Carrington. I could... Um, um, these guys could... One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. That'll do it. 
All right, drawing the next counter. That's another German. Okay, this is the last German counter, and I'm going to make a combat because we are going to hurt the six airborne out here. Um, we have got um, 30, 36, 42 versus 8, which is 5 to 1 in clear terrain. 5 to 1 in the clear 3. 5 to 1 clear 3 is an exchange. Um, oh, geez. Defender eliminated. Attacker loses an equal number of steps. Defender eliminated. Um, one, two, three, four steps. That's that's the six airborne. One, two, three, four. Um, just need to double check. I think the uh, I think you choose your own steps. I know that in the case of overstacking, tactic. Ah, yeah, thanks. That's the one I was thinking of, yeah. And it's just noted, Tactica e Strategia. Boom, it's Polish, right? Um, yeah, player owning the, owning the units. So I can take basically these relatively weak 7-Eleven units. So I've wiped out the, um, I don't need to move them. I can move just the 21st Panzer Division force in. Yeah, he does heaps. He does. He, he designs dozens and dozens of um, of different games on different titles. Plus, he publishes a lot of books on these subjects as well. Um, so, look, quite a coup over here for the Germans. They've pushed out, um, well, pushed out, wiped out the Sixth Airborne across the river there um, by lucky um, chip draws. And now there's just Americans and British left. Plus, there's still this German reaction. British, look, British would love a movement. Nope, we'll get an American combat or move. Um, and there's no point doing combat because all the Germans have just moved out of striking range. Um, but now we bring our reinforcements on. So the let's, let's have a look at how the way Allied reinforcements work. They get... Uh, so these are the different formations. We've got 2nd Armoured, Ninth Division, and two independent formations. So four formations. I roll the die, and it's a five. I can bring in uh, that number. That number halved. Rounded. Uh, that, no, sorry, it's that number, or two. So I can bring all formations on, and I place them in a beach hex first. So I'm bring the second army in. Um, here, the ninth here, and we'll bring in. Actually, we'll bring the ninth at Utah. Four, two, three, independent formation there, independent reconnaissance formation there. One. I took the beach open marker. Got to keep moving that. Stop moving that. Hundred one designs, and it says from. Uh, Tactica e Strategia. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played anything. A lot of them are in Polish language, and you have to get translation. I think the design is pretty good in kind of making these available, but um, oh, Charles says he's got the Africa Core version. Um, do you have the... Did it come with English rules, Charles? Do you know? So having placed their reinforcements, the Americans now get their movement. And I've got to, I've got to, I've got to do as much damage to these Germans as possible on this turn before their lines become too solid. It's already looking a bit scary. Um, I just don't know where. One, two, three, four. All right, so I'm going to try and clear the road to Karen Ten over here. One, two, three, four, five. Hopefully that gives something. Um, I should move from left to right, really. Mm, they've really kind of... Look at that. That's a defensive six. 
focus on Karen Tan's 90th. I could bring. I could try and attack across there. It's a town. Uh, they don't have a lot of strength in there. Seven. Seven versus my 18. I could bring these guys down and then attack across there. So I'd have 23. Which gives me three to one with one left. I've got to try it, I think. Um, three, four, five, six, seven. I can go down here into the marsh, which costs three, across there, and secure saint sauveur le vicomte and follow up. English rules are hard to understand, can a bit thin. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, look, these airborne units, they have to, they have to keep driving, because they've only got, they're only here for five turns, basically. Um, fourth division. Fourth division, I'm kind of losing track of. Oh, I forgot the airborne units can stack with. Um, they don't. They don't count for sort of divisional limitations. So I can effectively stack um, these guys together. Yeah, they can all stack together. So fourth division can stack with 101st. Um, yeah. So let's see, reconnaissance three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eleven. Hold that position there. Ninth division, they're going to come straight out to the west. Ooh, three, four, five, six. If I don't do that, I'm pretty sure they can come in here, stack with 101st. Fourth division can go one, two, three, four. Uh, four to one odds in Bocage, it's going to be tough. Um, mm, yeah, I'll make a run of it, see how we go. Um, these guys here as well, but they can't do much. They'll just move in there and really. Really, really, so I can go three, four. I can do the same with this 101st. Just get better odds against. No, I'll keep them there. We've done this, I don't know, we've done some of this, but not all of it. Um, we're now looking at this line of German defenders, which is going to be tough. Eight and seven. Um, Panzerlier 10, but only two steps here. If I can get a good combat off against them. Uh, I could focus my efforts here. We've got all these reinforcements here. We'll have, yeah, good movement. I kind of want to clear a gap along this. This, this primary road is going to be important. So I'm looking, I'm looking at maybe, f I know it's kind of <laughs> ahistorical, but maybe first vision shifts, second comes on to the right. Um, so I could go something like one, four, five, six. And then I can move into there, maybe. I'm worried about leaving that these guys all by themselves. So they'll join, they'll, they'll join up there. Then I'm looking at getting some decent attacks up here. Armoured, armoured. 26. They'll hold Bayou, just to be safe. Uh, 
26. It'll be three to one to be a tough combat, but what the heck. Three, four, five. One, two, three. And then this armor division, two, three. So you can see I'm trying to clear this sort of crossroad here. Um, pushing away from Bayou. It's not, it's not great, but they're already kind of on the fringes of that, uh, that, uh, that bocage. It's tough. And of course it's just German. I almost, I was about to move the British, got to stop doing that. All right, that's the end of American movement. Make sure I'm not forgetting any rules. Stacking limit, yep. Open beaches, yep, yep. I think that's all good. If you spot me doing anything dodgy, let me know. All right, and we've got finally British movement. This, so this is frustrating. This could have been literally the second last chip. All these British units on the beaches. Now, what are they going to do? Um, well, this is probably the weakness, but they don't, they don't get a combat either. They've already drawn their two combat chips. All I can really hope for. I can't just leave this gap. That's the other problem. Oh, this is still the third wave as well. So the, the British aren't going to get their first turn reinforcements. So they arrive. Um, we can split these guys up. 51st Division. 51st Canadians. They'll land there. And we will send 50th, 50th out to the left. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Seventh armored on their right. One, two, three, four, five. Six. And then 51st on their right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And they can make it as well. I think that flipped. Did they take a step loss? I can't remember. Um, but we'll bring the Canadians out here. We'll... Yeah, we'll get these guys to move in. Third division around Con. Yep. Sixth airborne holding. Um, the west side of the Orland River and the Khan Canal. And as I said, this is just movement, not combat, because it's the first turn. And the last chip is American combat or movement. They want to fight. So we've got a series of battles taking place along the American line here. And I think, I think, I think I want to throw as much as possible, even these. So this is 12 on 3, 4 to 1, left 2 for the Bocage. Bocage is 2 left. Oh no, uh, yeah, 2 to the left. They ignore DR. And they treat DR asterisk as, B, asterisk as BR1. BL1. Uh, it's not nice, but... Wow. Yeah, let's do it. We're getting some replacements, right? So, first of all, up here, we've got two to one. Two to one, four is a DR. Because it's Bocage, the Germans can ignore DR results. So nothing happens there. I'm not going to attack there. Yeah, they do. I'll get to those SS stacks out in the right in a moment. Um, got a lot of... Um, Strong points here, so basically we've got oops, 15 on 3 is 5 to 1 in a marsh, 4 to 1, 4 to 1, 2 is a DR in marshes. Yep, they can't ignore DR results, so they're eliminated and we can advance. Now we've got I think 11 on 1, that's guaranteed, they're gone and we can advance. Okay. This is this is pretty much a given. There's nothing, no surprises in these combats here. I don't want to attack there. That's five on six. 
I have to, so basically here's the rule I mentioned about mandatory attacks. If I attack here, if I attack Karen 10, um, there are other units in my zone of control that I also have to attack. And these guys can attack, satisfy that, that, that demand. It's a bit like the Atlantic War rules. Unfortunately, um, I don't have great odds. I didn't realize these guys were five defense in Bocage across a stream. The minor river, that's going to be at least three column shifts to the left. Um, I don't have to attack Karen 10. That's another interesting rule. Um, zones, zones of control don't extend into cities. Um, the net effect is I can attack that slightly re that, that, that unit to the southwest without having to attack the city. Yeah, allied and German ZSEs do not extend into city hexes. Yep. So what I might do is rather than sort of, I'll try and surround Carrington first and go Fresh Ninth Division, 18 plus 5, 23, 33 on 5 is 6 to 1. Mm, this might be an opportunity to use my naval counter. 6 to 1. So sorry, 5, yeah, 6 to 1. If I use this, it'll push up to 7 to 1. Where's the naval line? Ah, oh, is this the naval line? That's the naval line. We're way past the naval line. So don't worry about that. <laughs> Six to one. Two to left for the blockage. One to left for the, the minor river. Gives me a net three to one. Three to one. Two is going to be a DR result. And they can ignore that because it's blockage. So nothing happening around there. Panning to the right. We're looking at this attack on Isigny. In there, we look at what they have. They have a two, there's no armored units here, so they just have a defensive one. So it's 18 on three, which is six to one. In a town across a minor river, is four to one. Four to one, one is a DR result, and they can't ignore that, so they do have to retreat one. And I get across the river. This is all the 29th division, so they're all happy. These guys won't attack. Yeah, I've got options here. I could... No, I was going to attack Panzerli here, wasn't I? So 27. I'm just past that naval line. Look at those clever Germans just retreating past that naval line, which I wasn't even aware of. <laughs> um, so 27, 33. 3 to 1. 2 left because of Bocage. We'll make it 1 to 1. I think I've got to do it. Oh, I shouldn't have done it. It's an AL1. Attacker loses one step. We'll take it from those guys. That's it. That's the only result. Um, but over here, we've got 15 on 3, 5 to 1. The woods, 5 to 1. No, sorry, it's forest. Gives them 1 to the left. So 5 to 1, 4 to 1. 4 to 1, 3 is a DR asterisk. It's a two-step unit, so they lose a step and have to retreat two, and I can advance into their first division, two different divisions. So at least some gains around here. It's not much. <sighs> that, folks, is the end of the, the first turn. So basically the first week, if you sort of think of it in those sort of abstract turns, the first week of, of campaigning. And I reckon that is not far from historical outcome. Um, okay, so what are we looking at here? Let's say this is the 13th of June. Um, that's around the time the Americans captured St. Savoy Le Vicomte. Um, I don't think Carantan had fallen yet. Certainly what happened over here was was horrible for the 6th Division, that's not historical, but the line Bayou had fallen by this stage, um, 
I think that's pretty close, roughly. So although, as I said, you're abstracting time, um, if I can pan around, you'll be able to see the, uh, the, the order of activations here. This series of German reaction, move, move, combat was very, pow very, very powerful and very effective. Um, so to finish out the turn, we go through attrition phase, we check for supply. Everything is, is looking good. All units can draw supply. Cleanup phase. This is where any units in this just entered box shift over to the may leave box. So it's not an instant leave. You have to enter here for one movement point from here. It's in this point that they shift over here. We then remove combined arms and prepared offensive markers. I didn't show prepared offensives. It gives you basically one column shift to the right. If you prepare an offensive, it seems like a bit of a gamble, to be honest. Um, you really saw how the Americans prepared their offensive and then the Germans just withdrew. So if you're then <laughs> placing a prepared offensive marker, you'd want to be sure that the Germans aren't going to retreat from that hex. And maybe it's somewhere like around Khan or Karen 10, for example. Maybe, maybe in fact, there we go. That's a good use of a prepared offensive marker because uh, I know I'm going to attack Karen 10. Let me just check that's all legal. That's probably perfect um, use of that counter. <laughs> Here I'm thinking, why would I do, what, how would I use this? But uh, prepared offensive, trying to find some rules on it. I can't find it, but I think that's how it works. And I think it's just a one column shift to the, the right. I'll look it up later. In any case, we progress. Um, victory check phase. Any victory points gained this turn? Well, let's just remember what they all are and where they are. Here we go, ally victory. We captured Adamantius. I've captured that, I've counted that already. That's one victory point. Um, didn't capture Khan. Didn't capture Sherborg. I don't control any Khan hexes. Didn't capture Sherborg. Control of all city hexes at the end of turn 10. That's a sort of end of game consideration. Not in Brittany. I haven't exited the Eastern box. There's no French on the map yet. The Germans. Haven't eliminated anything yet. Um, Patrick Driver or British Special Service. I so does is the six airborne? Do they count as special service? Paratrooper glider or British Special Service Unit eliminated. I need to check that. Yeah, I'll come back to that. So, back to the second slide. That's the end of the turn. We now move to turn two. We advance the turn record track. It is the third week in June now. We draw a weather chip from the cup. Now this is critical. This is the game shaping so much. Um, oh, and it showers. It showers again. Okay, so what we do is I put the showers marker on the sorry on the turn track. You notice this already has showers. This stays on the track, and it will never come out again. Showers, well, we just had a showers turn, so um, pretty standard rules. Tactical air markers can be used, naval support can be used. Neither of those naval support markers were used on that turn, although I believe I could have here. I forgot about it. No, where were they? They'll just be on the line, that's right. Um, 
action chit available is basically the same as last turn. So this shows you what's available. On a shower's turn, the US gets three movement slash combat. One, two, three. The British either get one move and two combats or two move, one combat. They're gonna take, and they have to make this public to the German player. So they're gonna take two move, one combat this turn. And I swear to God, if they draw that combat chip before they can move, actually no, they wanna draw a combat chip before they move this turn. Maybe in fact, because the lines are pretty static now, maybe they do want two combat. I can't imagine the Germans pulling too far back from here. So yeah, let's let's do one move, two combats. And the Germans get three, three move combat and two reactions. Um, incidentally, the Germans had another reaction um, that they could have used, but geez, they really didn't need to. Um, they save that thing the turn, save it in the turn, it's wasted, so that's gone. Yeah, so these go into the, ah, but, 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 the allies also get to pick one because they always hold the initiative. So, uh, choose one of the action chits to be played during the first action round. Done. Everything else goes in the cup and will come out later. So we're gonna start with British combat. We know this, it's guaranteed. Yeah, so even if it's gonna be uploaded, it'll be pretty much as soon as this finishes, it'll go up um, live. Sometimes it takes uh, a couple of minutes to process, but it should be there almost straight away. Yeah, thanks private public. Thanks Marty. Yep, I'm gonna continue, but um, uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, Again, for those who are just joining, I know it's sort of early morning for the USA, so people are starting to arrive. This is um, The Dark Summer, Normandy 1944, Ted Racer. We've just ran through the first turn. It's taken about an hour and a half, but I've been moving pretty slow as I kind of explain things as I go. We're now at the start of the second turn. Things free up a bit more. Um, there's no fixed opening here. The only thing we do is we pick an allied initiative marker from the chits they've selected. We place it in action round one on here. We get replacements as well based on weather. So we consult the replacements table, which is down here, being showers. The US get one mech replacement and one infantry replacement. They haven't suffered any mech replacements, but they do get their one, one infantry replacement. And where would they like it? Should we get... Maybe these guys, because they're a bit vulnerable in the blockage out there. And this is, as I said, where I wanted to drive through. Apologies for that, blocking that. I took it from the 2nd Division here. So the 23rd Regiment, 2nd, have taken replacements. The British get um, one armoured. And just for those Canadians watching, the Canadians are considered within this British replacements. On sun and cloud day, we do get a Canadian replacement. For this, for showers though, we get one armoured replacement, and I don't think we've suffered an armoured replacement, an armoured loss, sorry. We have Canadian losses. You can't bring eliminated units back into place. It's only reduced units, which isn't great. I needed more replacements. I need sun and cloud to bring these guys back. The Germans, however, get one infantry replacement. So they can bring this. Uh, it's only one, it's only one extra point. I could bring the 352nd back for six extra defense. I'll do that. I know these guys are in a vulnerable position, but uh, that's 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 one extra step, one extra defensive point. This is three extra defensive points if I do that, so I'll do that. That's replacements. That's pretty straightforward, folks. And uh, now we do the action phase. That's a British combat. Um, and the Germans have put me in a difficult position because if I attack here. I have to then attack here, and I have to attack here. And that's, that's, that's just too tough. This position here, however, is more vulnerable. I've got 12 plus 18, 30 on six, and it's inside the line. It's inside the naval line. So we're looking at five to one, and if I use my British naval support, 
it'll be six to one. The question is, do I do this now? Last time I didn't get a chance to use it. Um, is five to one, is five to one enough? I think it's, I think five to one's enough. Five to one are de decent odds. Good chance of doing some damage. A four plus eliminates them. And it's a six. That's a defender eliminated result. And I'll advance. This is with the 51st division moving up. Sorry, that's just to the right of the camera. Looking at this hex here. Eliminated the Germans, moved up. Now there's a gap. We can drive straight through here. So this is where the Germans absolutely have to. I'd made a mistake earlier. I put their reaction chips in the cup. They keep these in supply in their pocket and they can spend these wherever they want. So the Germans are saying, well, I don't want that gap to be left there. We're going to react to that gap opening up. And we pick a formation. Uh, Panzer Lair looks good. 12th SS. They're free over here. Why not bring them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they say, hey, what gap are you talking about? Whew. That's, that is how you use a reaction. Um, <laughs> model use of a reaction counter, I think. Um, now, one thing I haven't talked about with these reactions is that, um, so I should say, they can activate either one stack or one formation, which is in this case a division. Um, active Kampfgruppen and Tiger Battalions may attack one hex after all movement is complete. Now there are these little sort of activated counters here to show you. I could, I could have brought these all together in one stack and attacked. I don't want to. Um, yeah, these are some strong British and Canadian stacks there. I'm happy to just plug the gap, and leave it how it is. Um, <laughs> as I say this, I look over here. Um, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. They couldn't have made it anyway. That's fine. So, they've had the reaction. We draw the next counter from the cup, and it's a German combat or move. We want to go German movement. And of course, we get some German, sorry about that, we get some German reinforcements. We roll the die, it is a four. So I can either bring in four formations, let me just show you, we've got some new formations coming on. 353rd from the south. The 2nd Panzer Division from the south. And we have a Nibelwerfer support. Hey, Uber Welke look in the front. I don't know, would they say that? <laughs> I don't know what they're saying if they say that, Jay. What did you say? Or something luck in the front for you or something? Uber Welke. Look in the front, even see. You'll have to translate for that for me. Um, so we have got six available formations, including the two from last turn. We have to, sorry, three from last turn. We have to bring in last turn's reinforcements as a priority. Just if you look at what's going on here, if I can bring the map down, sorry. So this is last turns. They have to be one of the group. This is turn two. And we've got two out to the right. So these guys have to be brought in from the southern edge. No, western edge, sorry, there's W's. And they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we've also got two out on the right. What gap are you talking about? Ah, thanks. Yeah. West here. Okay, so let's go. Uh, east, apologies. Um, moving six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's three formations. I have one more and I'll bring in the second panzer from the south, moving ten. 
I'm going to rough here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's uh, now. Now, of course, sorry. Technically, I should have placed those units all first, and then um, and then move them. So I've placed the reinforcement groups. Four reinforcement groups. They've moved, um, and now I can move all my forces. Hey, Firestore, thanks for joining. Um, okay, it's so a bit of a problem over here. I can go one, two, three, four, five. Six. I find it pretty easy to plug these gaps. Uh, hmm, don't want to move too far away from there. Everything else looks all right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, everything else is here okay. That's a bit weak. Uh, um, that's a bit weak. Let's bring. They shouldn't have been stacked together anyway. Naughty Germans. Neither should they. Okay. Sorry, this is stacking two different divisions together. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. That's actually only one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, stacking is just a reminder for myself as well. I didn't realize only one division per hex, unless they're airborne, they're exempt from those rules. Um, look, I think I need to, instead of moving there, I need to kind of pull back to here. So they'll pull back, they'll pull back in the forest to there. Um, I kind of need, I need to pull back away from this line. Um, one, two, three, four. Talisa cells, and we'll pull back there. And they have to move. Three, four, five. Okay. Okay, so I guess the pressure has built up on the Germans and they have had to retreat a little, just a little bit, um, to fill this gap here. Um, but not a lot. And um, we can bring some of these 326 around. ZSC does not extend across a major river. So one, two, three, four. Four, two, three. We'll line the river and just stare at the um, the remnants of the six airborne from across the. Uh... Yeah, that's it. All right, and so there are two German reinforcements that didn't arrive that turn. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, don't, I mean, as I said, first time I've played this, but I don't know how these these will work with these reinforcements if we build up or. Um, there are. Let me just show you. So again, I'll bring the camera around. Brace yourself. So these are the turn three reinforcements, and I can only bring in up to six formations, although there are some large SS formations. So we'll see what happens, I guess. All right. Now we've got American move or combat. The Americans are in good position now to combat, um, particularly around current 10. I'll have an opportunity, I guess, for a strong... It's only one column shift, and it's negative uh, to the left, sorry. So one for the town, one for the minor river, one right for the prepared offensive. So I can get 18... 18... I can get a lot. <laughs> um, I kind of want to throw everything at that and then have a weak attack on this one. So let's do 10, I don't want to completely throw it away, airborne, 15 on 5, which is 3 to 1, 3 to 1, um, 12, I'm just counting up, sorry, 12 plus 18 is 30, 30 on 7, does that give me 4 to 1, okay. Let's try. Yeah, I'm going to do 10 plus the bottom two units here, 
gives me 20 on 5, which is 4 to 1. The Bocage is 2 to the left. The River is 1 to the left. Gives me um, 1 to 1. But again, this is just my mandatory attack, basically. And it's a 5. 1 to 1, 5 is a DR result. They're in Bocage. They ignore it. But I didn't lose anything, which is great. Now I've got 1830 on 7, which is 4 to 1. Um, 3 to 1 for Karen 10, 2 to 1 for the stream, 3 to 1 for my prepared offensive. This is where I want a 6. A 5, 3 to 1, 5 is an exchange. Defenders are eliminated and I lose 3 steps among my attackers. Um, 1? No, I didn't count them, did I? Um, let's take them from the 9th division and the 90th will advance. So we've captured current 10 during the second week of the campaign. Um, yeah, okay. And those, that, yeah, okay, this is looking good. A shame this combat didn't go better, but there'll be opportunities. Um, all right, what other combats can we do? We can't do anything here or here, but we can almost certainly wipe that out. Yep. Over here, we have 18 on three. It's a five to one. The marsh is one, so five to one, goes down to three to one for terrain. That's the marsh and the Mon River. Three to one, three is a DR asterisk. Um, so they suffer a step loss and they have to retreat two. One, two to the south. Yeah, okay, looking good. We've kind of, kind of linked up. A couple of zones of control. But we have the 90th division, the 29th, linking up around here. Again, keep in mind, second week of the campaign. We're looking around the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th of June. No combat along the line here. I'm okay with that. And that's it. So not much combat, but important combat. Um, and do the Germans want to respond? No. They don't need to. This is a bit tricky, but it's not a gap just yet. Happy to continue. We'll see what happens. German move in combat. Um, so we'll move and we'll get our troops up towards here. Second Panzer, do we send them out towards the peninsula? One, two, one, two, three, three, four, five, six. Um, and we've got options for the 2nd Panzer Division. Um, I could kind of keep them in reserve in St. Lowe. They don't need really to be anywhere. This is a bit dangerous. Uh, let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, I'd like to keep my divisions together. And I'll go there. And then I'll bring Panzerlier across to the rest of the formation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is looking good for the Germans. Um, they have a third flak here. I can send that Ost formation into. No, they'll pull back to. Saint Jean de Day. The black unit can't stack with them. So they'll come one, two, three, four. It's kind of putting themselves in harm's way just to block any potential movement through here. I don't think they could really do much to exploit. Yeah. Now I I'll point out you can move in and out of the the Sherbog box. So I could move some of these German units out from that box. 
they just kind of don't need to. Um, now that Carantan has fallen, I guess a lot of these Americans want to move back to the north. Uh, what else can the, the Germans move? We've got this unit here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's about it. Oh, can I move? Here's a question. Do I place reinforcements for every move? They become available on the turn. The entry, you can't enter when scheduled. Enter the beginning of move rounds only. Okay, so I, it's every move round, not just the first. So these guys also come on board. Uh, 353rd from the south. They arrive and they go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I now have some Neville Vaffis in my pocket. Again, like the, the naval support, they're available for attack or defense. Um, Germans don't respond to their own movements, so we draw and it's British combat. Well, this is okay. Um, actually, no, it's not. There's not much at all they can do. Uh, we've got 12, um, 16 on 2, 8 to 1 in a city. The city gives me two column shifts, so it goes out to 6 to 1, I think. 8 to 1 to 6 to 1, 6. Um, even at 4 to 1, if I'm playing that wrong, they're eliminated. And we secure Mr. Hum. And that's, I think, the first, first city secured. Okay. Any other British combat? Look, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. Um, yeah, no, no British combat, basically. I don't have to attack into the city. I could just attack that, but if I attack that, I have to attack that, and then, and so forth. Um, so no, no British combat. And incidentally, again, British combat markers coming out early, and there's a British move marker. So they get their reinforcements. Has to be their last turn reinforcements first. So, oh, they get to roll, I guess. And then they receive two, or half of those available. Well, half of those available is... Uh, well, there's five available, half. So it rounds it up or down. Or round it down. So that's two in either case. They have to bring on their first wave of reinforcements. So we'll bring in the 49th. And they will also bring in the... Fifteenth Division, and these guys will have to wait for future turns. Now movement. Um, okay, so they've got to kind of take over this position here. Woods cost three to move through, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, I'm trying to kind of shift away. I don't think I can do all that much against the uh, 12th SS. Um, One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll go there, and I'll slot in there. Uh, yeah, it's a tough, really tough German line. Um, I'm going to have to really start launching some attacks all along the line. Because um, the moment you launch one attack, you've got to launch 
yeah, attacks everywhere. Uh, when you've got like a solid German line like this, so much you can do. We have American move or combat. All right, so now, now I think we want to get the Americans. We're going to move them. We've got one more counter activation left, so we can move with these guys. Um, I'll go there. I'll go one, two, three, four, five. I'll go one, two, three, four, five. This is all second division in that formation. And we'll get the second armoured to try to support them down here. So can I do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, yep, yeah, easily. And we'll cross back over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is first division who have shifted a bit. Um, oh, American reinforcements. Before I do any of that, let's see what they have and what they're bringing on. They roll a die and they get a three. Um, and they've got five formations. So they can either bring, actually three is higher than half of five rounded down, so they can bring in three, three formations. Now they've got some interesting options. They've got this um, carpet bombing, tank destroyer. This can be used um, to augment combat strength. Uh, this can only be used twice, first time and then second time. And I can't remember what it does. Column shifts, I think. Um, I'm not going to use that yet because there's no rush to bring that on. Um, I, I'm tempted by the tank destroyer, but it's only plus two. Again, no, no rush to bring that on. I think bringing on some more troops here. So we've got 79th, 30th, and 83rd divisions coming on. Um, going to bring someone at Utah, and then these two guys at Omaha. So we've got uh, 79th over here, 30th, 83rd. Um, they're placed. We can now move them. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and bring the beach with me again. These guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, I will put those guys in there and throw those guys in there. So we're going to target this line along here. We can bring the 29th down. Um, that will keep the pressure on these reduced Germans here. We can also bring the 90th down into there. So three, four, five, six. And we'll bring some of the 9th division down into Carantan. They're going to come three. I need to start thinking about a plan for withdrawing these airborne forces. No, Carantan fell um, in, what was it? It was a DR asterisk result. Um, three to one odds. Um, yeah, kind of a little bit of luck uh, with that prepared offensive that I placed. Um, so 82nd, I'll stay there. These guys can now move and uh, we're going to start hitting these Germans. But where? <laughs> uh, uh, that'll give me 12. Oh, it's just tough. Instead of hitting that, I will come back a bit and hit the Ost unit. And then I might keep myself options open, so three, four, five, six. It's six there. Seven, eight. So I'm putting the 79th division right in the center here near Pont de Abbey to be flexible, I guess. Um, I'm giving the Germans some flexibility here, but um, 
Yeah. We'll see how that goes. And that's American Movement. Oh, did I move these guys? Um, is it worth moving these guys? They will just come across. One, two, three, four, five. They can do that. That'll do. No German reaction needed. I say needed. They could retreat. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking that a retreat would save this flak unit. It'd probably save these guys. It'd probably save that. Probably, yeah, look. Um, it's difficult, but we're going to gamble on reaction now. Oh, I only have to activate one formation, of course. So I can activate, actually, the third Fulchermjäger. They will come back. One, two, three, four. And I'll pull back away from here. It could save their bacon here. It's just, it's a subtle move. I could have even alternatively brought the 77th in. Oh, maybe that was unnecessary, but I'm potentially saving three, three, well, basically an entire division through this formation. It could be risky. We'll see what happens next. Uh, it's German combat or movement. <laughs> so there you go. The reaction was unnecessary. In fact, there's only two counters left. This one and another one. Um, I don't want to engage in combat. I just kind of want to... I just kind of want to survive. Um, so maybe maybe it's time to come out of Sherborg. Double check. Shovel box uh, can enter the shovel box. Um, German units may not enter after I control show. German units may leave the box through any seal that provides no enemy units. Yep, that's fine. They can leave until Sherborg is isolated. So, what I can do is bring some of these um, 243rd Division infantry units out. Um, they have no movement. They're OSC. I don't want to rely on them. These guys can basically go one, two, three, four, five, six. One to come out. Two, three. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll reinforce that. And then I will tighten this um, this defensive perimeter. If the Americans are going to let me have it, I will have it. Bit scary around here. Um, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and a half. And then we'll bring the seventy-seven in. One, two, three, four, five. Um, actually, just there. Four. We'll save the flak. One, two, three, four, five, six. We will also save our Aust troops and a bit of the three fifty-second. And and I'll just pull them back as well because they're really vulnerable. But the rest of these troops are. Look, if the Germans want to attack this, if, if the Americans want to attack this, it's going to be tough for them. In woods, ten defense, everything else along here. This is a bit scary. This is why we have these guys. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Um, we'll just pull them away one hex. Yeah, everything else looks okay from a German perspective. These guys up here, of course. Um, six or eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, six. Maybe they should go the other way. We'll hold them there and see what happens. They can always shift out the other way. 
Okay, uh, and that's the second last card. Last one is American Combat All Movement. All the Germans have just pulled away from everywhere. There aren't many good opportunities for combat left. Do we attack anyway? Um, like I said, risk attack here. I am tempted to move again, which lets me bring more reinforcements on. One or half of what I've got. That sucks. So let's bring the tank destroyer on, <laughs> which is one anyway. That was a bad roll. Just a, one, one higher. Um, and now American movement. Um, okay, so we need to need to hit or be in a position to hit at the start of the next turn. Um, uh, okay. One, two, we're going to strike here. That's a defense of something we don't know. Relying on the 79th to push out west. 82nd can come across here. One, two, three, four. They'll be joined by the 9th. One, two, three. We're going to hit these guys if we can. 9th division. One, two, six, five. I'll come over here as well and hit this newly arrived 77. That's a strong formation, but um, yeah, maybe we can do something. 29th will move south, and then we'll get uh, these guys coming up. Three, six. So that's a tough hex, but actually these guys can push in there, and we'll have these guys push in there and look to attack here. Maybe look to attack here, and we'll see what else. And there is a German reaction. No, no, we've used both our German reactions. So they, they yeah, did it pretty well. Folks, that's the end of the second turn. Um, we run through the rest of the sequence of play. So we've got um, attrition. Still no bad as supply. Haven't cut the, uh, the uh, peninsula yet. Uh, clean up phase, there's no just entered, no prepared offensives. And victory check, I don't think there's anything else to check. So, yeah, advancing the turn marker. Uh, we are up to the third turn. We draw a weather chit again, just to give you a sense of what's inside there. And we pull out. More bloody showers. Um, third showers in a row. And what does that mean again? Same action chits pretty much. Um, uh, what do the British want to do? They want two combat, one movement again. Um, but this time we're going to use American combat for the initiative. The Americans want to catch the jump while they can. The Germans get their two reaction moves. Everything else goes in the cup. Ready for drawing. Replacements. Uh, so we get showers again. One mech, one infantry for the US. What can we use? What do we need really? It'd be nice. Uh, US First Division probably don't need it there. I think the Ninth Division out here, which took some heavy losses, taking Kara and Ten, could use it more. Still no armored. Yep, still no mech losses. And the British have one armored. And again, no armored losses yet. Um, the Germans get one infantry. And again, they can use this somewhere. I'm sure I had a reduced. Here we are. There, yeah, looking pretty good. Replacements went out to the action phase. How my, my battery's running pretty low, folks, so I might have to cut off in a minute. We'll do this first round of US combat, and then I'll stop. So we're gonna attack here. I'm not going to, oh yeah, there's a strong point there, so I don't have to attack here. I've got 16 on one in a marsh. If you want to the left, I think it's guaranteed. 
pretty sure it's guaranteed. And they can advance. So advancing down the coast, very close to entering sort of the Sherbal defensive ring. Um, where else did I want combat? I wanted combat here. Yeah, so I've got uh, 18 on 4. Um, 18 on 4. This is a good opportunity to use my tank destroyer. So if I send this in, um, it's going to be 20 on 4, which is 5 to 1, with 2 column shifts in total, which is 3 to 1. A 3 to 1, 4 is a DR asterisk, so they'll take a hit and then retreat 2, and I can advance into St. Sever Le Vicomte, taking it again. This is a <laughs> I wouldn't have had to do this if I would have held on to it, but, um, well, look, I'm causing a loss, a step loss at least. Um, and over here, big attacks. Um, we've got 6, 12, 22, 27 on 6, which is 4 to 1, 4 to 1 in Bocage. 4 to 1 Bocage, which gives me 2 to 1. A 2 to 1 4 result is a DR, and they ignore DR in Bocage. So that's the effect of Bocage, just constantly cancelling those retreat results. Um, down here, more Bocage. Can you guess what's going to happen here? 18, 23 on 8. 23, that's where I just needed that little tank destroyer. I don't think I can use it. I can use it once. Let me summarise. Uh, tank destroyer, I think it's once per action round. Tank destroyers once per turn. Once per turn. Once per turn. They've been used for the turn. They're done. I'll put them on the action round to show that they've been used. Um, so where was I looking? Here, three to one in Bocage. Brings it down to one to one. Oh, we're gonna have a go. Four. One to one, four is a DR. What did I tell you? The Americans, the Germans ignore the, uh, uh, the DR result. Nothing happens. Here though, we've got 18 on four, four to one, two to one for Bocage, four, two to one, four. Can you guess what the result is? It's another DR, nothing happens. They ignore it. Um, okay, kind of tempted to do something here. Um, that's 10, that's just tough. Oh, I can't do anything along the lines. It's just, um, I've got, to, I've got to attack basically all five hexes. I could attack, do a weak attack here. As soon as this unit attacks, this has to be attacked. They have to attack, which means this has to be attacked, which means they have to attack, they have to attack, they have to attack. It's gonna be a series of very weak combats in Bocage. Although there are two in the woods. Which, um, two in the woods, in the forest, sorry, which are only one column shift to the left. <sighs> maybe that's, maybe I do sort of a series of weak attacks on the left. Um, so if I do seven plus 12 is 19, it's not even 20, 18. It'd be two to one down to like one to two, and then I'd have to get a two to one down to one to two, just to get a, no, I don't have the forces organized to, to do much of, of any use around there. So no combats for the Americans, in this area at least, which is a bit of a shame. All the action happening around sort of Utah, Catenton area. We don't need a German reaction, so we draw, and it's another American activation. Um, and I could keep attacking, but I'm just butting my head against the wall. I want to bring some reinforcements on, so I'm going to move, and I get to roll for reinforcements. I roll six, which is good. I can bring six formations on. I've got the third armoured over here. Third armoured, carpet bombing, tactical air, tactical air, tactical air. I can bring on six of the seven, so one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, five, oh, it's only six, so I can bring all six of them. All right, the Americans are reinforced happily. Third Armoured comes on, and where do they go? I think they've got to come on to Utah. So we'll bring in, I can bring on that. Um, and now we can do our movement. Um, and look, we can move. One, two, one, two, three. And then these, these guys with their rapid movement can come and fill the gap. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll keep pushing across there. These guys will come out. They'll go one, two, three, four, just to stop the Germans pushing out again. One, two, three, four. We'll get um, one, two, three, four. No, can't do that. One, two, th one, two, three. That stops the Germans pushing forward. Um, I would. Yeah, I can get an attack off there. We'll see what happens in this hex. So in fact, I can do one, two, three, four, five, six to get a stronger attack in that hex there. So I'm kind of weaving my way around these German defences. Now I want to kind of concentrate my efforts around here. So what I'm going to do is pull back one, two, three, four, and go one, two, three, four just to focus my efforts on these two hexes here. Again, this is not American combat, just American movement, but yeah, getting ready. An opportunity for a German reaction. There's only one American combat chit in there. Do they use it now? I should take you closer to show you sort of what's going on down here. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven vulnerable German formations. And they have got two reactions. So they're gonna use, oh, they can only, can't react with a whole four. So that's the thing, it's too much. We're gonna, we're gonna hope we draw a German movement chip before we draw the American combat chip. There we go, German movement chip. Um, now what do they do? Um, <laughs> I think I, I miscounted Bocage. It's three for the allies, sorry. Bocage costs allied units three hexes to move through. So I don't think he could have made it. Uh, I don't know, I think I've made a few miscalculations. It's two for the Germans. So these guys can go one, two, three, three, four, and then five, six in there, which forces a few mandatory attacks. Um, we'll hold the forest there. We'll hold that, we'll hold this. The flak, this is a trouble. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. We're gonna bring some of these Germans from the reserve, which I mentioned, 353rd, one, Two, three, four, five, six, um, seven. These guys are in a difficult position. They're going to have to pull away. So one, two, three, four. Five, six. It's not ideal, but it'll slow down the Americans in that area. Um, I'm worried about this. So, one, two, three. And then um, we'll move in there. That's a good defensive position. Actually, no, that's that's right. That's, that's decent where they are there. And let's bring these guys back into the line. No, I pulled them away from them because they were in trouble, weren't they? They can go there, but they will just hold back. And that's a pretty good German defensive position, I think. All right, a couple.
couple of minutes of battery left, so we'll keep going until until that's it. Okay, next counter is another German move or combat. Um, okay, well if they move again, they can put themselves in a slightly, slightly better position. Um, the 353rd could really move up in there. They could be supported by this Ost unit. Third Fortschmjäger is happy there. <clears throat> we get some more 353rd to move up into the Bocage there. I'm worried about these guys, but I'll, so I'll pull them back a little bit. 77th is okay, they're okay. Um, yeah, that's that's okay. Next counter is British Combat. <clears throat> okay, what do they do? Basically, the situation here is if the British attack anywhere in this line, they have to attack the whole line. They don't yet have the support, so they're not doing anything. So we go back to German move and combat. Um, look, the Germans don't want to do anything. They are sitting pretty happy. Um, there are no places really where they can attack. They'll just pass that, basically. Um, do they have... Oh, re okay, movement. What I've been forgetting to do is German replace uh, reinforcements. So the first re replacement is six. This is an important. This is the third turn. This is when all their formations come on. So they've got a lot of uh, second SS, ninth SS, tenth SS, first SS, an independent formation. They have 276 and more. They have another independent formation. This is all, sorry, off camera. Uh, fifth Fulcrumjäger, 277th. Um, artillery support. So they've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I've rolled a 6 for their first reinforcement, so they could have moved these on from the south edge. Sorry about this, it's catching up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and them. And I'll bring in artillery support. Five. And um, these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is all off camera, just down below. You can see I'm bringing reinforcements off. For the second. German movement, they roll four, which lets them bring the rest of their 13 reinforcements in. Three from the east. More from the east. And the rest are all from the south. Um, now I've got to move these up for the second turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is just looking bad for the Allies. They just haven't been able to... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now third movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. Haven't been able to catch the Germans and destroy them. The Germans' reaction and movement chit draw has just um, one, two, three, four, five, half, one. There's a solid line. Um, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five. I mean, this is maybe I should maybe I should move push more out to the to the west. Um, nah, that'll be fine. Yeah, basically the, um, the Americans haven't been able to destroy the Germans. They haven't been able to engage them in combat. Uh, there's only allied formations yet, but the Germans haven't used their reaction. It's a British movement, and heck, they can't really do anything. Um,
Hmm, what do they do? Um, try and concentrate their strongest forces in one particular area, but where? Um, I guess at the point here, one, two, three, four. It's just tough. It's really tough. This is their armored formation, but. I've got to be mindful they can attack across that river. I'm looking at towards Khan and the Orne River here. Um, oh, British, it's a British movement, so British reinforcements, they roll a one. They roll a one and they've got like a dozen formations to bring on. So, independent, independent, 11th armoured, 53rd, 43rd, guards armoured, independent, the 59th division. Okay, so they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can bring on four formations. They will bring on the 59th, the 43rd, um, the 53rd, and the 11th Armoured. But again, these guys cannot do a great deal. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Push them in there. We'll bring them back and we'll push the 53rd into there. One, two, three, four. So really at a point now where I'm just trying to economise my stacks. Pull the Canadians out and we'll push these guys. One, two, three, four. Try to get the best possible stacks in the front lines. Um, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Hold them there. It's getting tough. It's looking really tough for the Allies. That's British movement. Now we've got British combat following straight up, and I think we've got to attack here. Um, unfortunately, my battery is almost flat, so look, I know this is the last camera. I'm going to hold it there and finish up this video. Um, we are, as I said, towards the end. There's only one camera left in the cup. Oh, how am I going for battery life? Yeah, that's about to drop out. Um, so, folks, finishing up here, this... Uh, I don't think the Allies have attacked as much as they should have. Um, look, maybe the British just need to go all out. Um, they've had three shower turns in a row, so they don't get a lot of replacements. They will get more replacements, of course, in better weather. Um, the Germans, though, have been very good in their use of reaction um, they've had a lot of good luck with movement. I mean, you just look at this. They got um, several movement turns before, yeah, movement, movement, before the Allies got a combat. We do have, of course, that American combat, combat or move. Um, lots to consider. So much to, to think about. And again, I get the sense there's a lot of replayability. You could, you could finish this off and, and immediately set up again and try something different. Haven't cut the peninsula yet. That's that's got to be a priority. Keep in mind, this is just it's already up to the third turn. So the Allies have got four turns left to clear out Cherbourg, or they instantly lose a game. So that's got to be a priority. Um, yeah, look, there's lots to consider. Feel free to add a comment. Uh, happy to take on board feedback. I know I've been miscounting Bocage for the Allies. That was a mistake. I actually counted it as two instead of three. Um, Battery's about to run out, so I'll finish up here. But folks, thanks for watching. Hope it's giving you some insight, and uh, catch you all later.